Hey guys, it's Mark from Not 7 Outdoors. Welcome back to another episode. Just out here making sure that my outboard is idling correctly for bass season. I got to take it on the test run on the water this weekend. Uh, I was going to do it tomorrow, but maybe we'll do it Sunday. Anyways, uh, last chance for musky, I guess, because bass opener opens up the weekend after. Uh, anyways, I'm out here. I figured, you know what? Might as well let you guys uh, in on what kind of boat I use. Guys, we'll start at the back here for a quick walkthrough. Uh, the back end is uh, it's the old school Mercury here. Um, it, I guess it does what I needed to do, so I can't really complain. It's severely underpowered, but I mean, that's how I bought the boat. Uh, so I got to put at least a 75 on here. Uh, next, we've got the 12 foot Minn Kota Talon, and that thing keeps you in lock. You're not going very many places with that thing. It does drag you a little bit, but not nothing you can't handle in the worst weather um my battery compartments here my bilge pumps i can put two 31 batteries in here and a group 24 for starting uh that's as that's as tight as you could possibly make it uh so i mean that's a struggle of having a, a smaller boat and trying to put all the top notch stuff in here just you run out of room so let's hit up the console oh first we've got a uh, storage here I uh, keep some extra props in here, some oil, whatever I need. Uh, I don't really put tackle in there. Two live wells here, big side, little side. Uh, across there, we've got our uh, rod locker, and this is an early Rangers Cherokee. I mean, I have not seen another uh, Ranger Cherokee in Ontario. I've seen, sorry, I've seen one that was like a 94 or something, but I've never seen like a 2000s because they used to do their Ranger Cherokee, Ranger Apache, and then Ranger. Uh, Comanche and uh, That's the rod locker there. You can put eight foot rods in there probably 10 12 rods comfortably You could probably jam pack it with 15 16 maybe 18, but you're good luck getting your rods out of there out there We have the built-in gas tank uh, For being a small aluminum bow. I think it puts like 60 liters in there uh, So I mean you could you could run Farther than I could ever run uh, in this thing before you ran out of gas uh, so at the console here, so I run Garmin. Garmin's super cheap. Uh, you can always run in and get their Garmin Cabela's or Bass Pro Shop. Always has them on Black Friday, Boxing Day deals. You get 9-inch Garmin's for like $800, $900 Canadian or like $600 American. So I just keep buying them pretty much. I would like to get, next year I'd like to get a, a Hummingbird Mega side on here. I just don't know how I could possibly fit that in there. Um, I store all my tackle in the bottom of the boat right here, so I've got a good like 18 inches there, 16 anyways, uh, and I just like run the whole thing flush uh, with rods, reel, not rods, reels, uh, just like tackle, um, boxes, bags, everything you can fit in there, and I just kind of hop over from one side of the boat to the other, and this is this is our hot lava zone. Um, let's see. Uh, so yes, uh, early boats like these, the older ones never have cup holders, so I built a little cup holder uh, here and I just throw like, I don't know, GoPro batteries, whatever I happen to need on there. Um, and you know, for me, I just don't see the point of upgrading my boat until, you know, uh, it may be to fish bigger tournaments, but I mean, I have no intention of fishing, you know, 150 boat tournaments. Uh, unless I can win. I mean, realistically, and I also, I've always said this, so, so no one should take offense. It's just a fact. But I mean, the same, like, 15 teams are going to win because they're always better than everyone else. Um, and if I enter the 150 boat tournaments, I'm going to be everyone else. So, I mean, in, you know, in five or six years, maybe I'll have a, you know, a 22-footer, and maybe I will be the man that, you know, is going to take everyone's money. But I, you know, have to be honest with myself. I'm a quite a few years away from that but I'm still young so on the business end here oh this is pretty cool I put this in this year this is the uh, just step down for the talent up and down works pretty sweet uh, Minn Kota Altrex uh, installed uh, the recessed foot tray last year you know it was kind of scary cutting a hole in your deck but it's all right uh, this year uh, with my Black Friday unboxing we bought the uh, TH Marine uh, cool blue uh, foot uh, pedal cover here let's see next we've got Garmin uh, this is a regular 995 SV or something it's just touch screen 
Um, realistically, I don't, I don't even know why I have it up here, other than I don't really need it at the console. Uh, this is my bread and butter right now, which is the live scope mount. Uh, when I bought my live scope, I was like, you know what? Cabell's has them on for like 900 bucks. So I'm into live scope for two grand. Let's, uh, let's, uh, fork out another 900 bucks and just have a live scope only, uh, graph here. So I run two nines up there and nine in the back. And realistically, and live scope and the Altrex here and the little TH Marine prop nut there. Uh, that's pretty much what the top people are throwing. You know, I guess some people are throwing the Mega 360 uh, for sure. I wish I, you know, I wish I had that, but that's probably the only difference between me and, and anyone else with a, you know, higher thousand dollar boat. Um, as far as like electronics and gear, you know, I've got my talent, I've got my Altrex, I've got my graphs. Um, so one thing that I talked about before is like just jam packing crap in a smaller aluminum boat. You run into problems like all this wiring up here. I mean, I run it, let's toss it in towards me. I run it along the deck here, which is probably a no, no, uh, but boats like this just aren't designed to have, you know, uh, four inches of freaking, uh, four inch thick uh, wiring to hide under the deck where you could with a you know a 21 footer or something anyways guys uh, this is the old Ranger Cherokee tackle warehouse uh, easy troll Minn Kota ride <laughs> next thing you know it's funny I'll run this off um, I've never even used this I don't even know if it works or not a little 12 volt here and what else do I have here uh, hummingbirds I don't I've never run I have sorry that's a lie I've run hummingbirds up front but these I just keep on there because they're someone drilled a huge hole in there, and I struggled. I struggled to put my freaking Garmin con in the console there. That was a that was a struggle, for sure. I ripped up a lot of deck, and I didn't have a problem ripping up the deck. But and sorry, the last very last thing I want to talk about is if you have a smaller boat like me, pay attention. This is my last point for end of the video. Um, that 24, uh, group 24, if you got a group 24 starting battery, it's probably not designed to run three <laughs> three graphs, your uh, Altrex spot lock, uh, your Talon. So that's the other thing I run everything just kind of around here. I'm not done with my wiring, which is why it's a mess, but basically I run it um, underneath here, just around to the console and down, and I just keep a, a, another battery there to run everything on the front of the boat, I mean, it's just way too much juice is what I'm asking for that one little battery to do. And I ain't got room for more uh, batteries back there. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, you know, I don't think you need a brand new $100,000 bass boat to be competitive. I mean, I've lost a fortune to people in like a freaking low stinger from 1973 with a 70 Evinrude that was made before I was born. Uh, and they're just better anglers, you know, at the end of the day. Uh, they put more time in the water. That's really what it's all about. It's nice to have, you know, a Talon and all checks a graph, but I mean, I was beating people without it, and uh, even with it, people will be beating me because it's just a pecking order about how good of an angler you are, and these are tools, but you know, you really don't need a, a high end uh, $100,000 rig to be competitive. And uh, hopefully, I can prove that this year once again and cash some checks because I got two tournaments back to back coming up in a couple weeks. Anyways, guys, short little video. This is my ride. Um, yeah, it's crazy. I bought this thing for like 7500 bucks. And now I don't even know how much it's worth, but with COVID, it's like way more than $7,500. So, thank you guys for watching and take care.